In just a matter of months during the Second World War, 434,000 people who were sent to Auschwitz were slaughtered as soon as they arrived at the camp. It was murder on an industrial scale, and the SS would bring back one horrific commandant to perform and oversee these actions, and that was Rudolf Hirsch. Hirsch was the commandant of Auschwitz, who would lose his job for allegedly having an affair with a prisoner, but at the end of the war he was seen as one of the most brutal and evil Nazis. He would push the concentration camp to its destructive limits, and Hearst was obsessed with efficiency and slaughtering as many people as he could, and he would then hide his crimes. But the mass deportations of Hungarian victims would be the largest mass killing following 1942 in such a short amount of time. But what is the story of Operation Hearst? Join us today as we look at this, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. On the 18th of March 1944, Hitler ordered Hungarian regent Miklos Horthy to meet with him, and he wanted Hungary to give him more respect and less resistance. Horthy refused, and he was then later held under house arrest, but the Germans and the SS would establish brutal laws and rules on the land. German tanks rolled into Budapest, and one man who was sent to the country was Adolf Eichmann, who was often considered the architect of the Holocaust. Eichmann's job in Hungary was to supervise the deportations of hundreds of thousands of Jews to concentration camps. He would set up his office in the majestic hotel in Budapest, and he brought in the Nazi persecution laws, and within eight weeks he had carried out huge deportations. Eichmann's plans involved using 45 cattle cars per train, four trains a day, and this would deport 12,000 Jews each day, and then later they would be deported from Budapest. But to match the deportations and the speed of them, Auschwitz was chosen to be the site where the Hungarian Jews would be sent to, this was due to its railway links and also the destructive capabilities and also the amount of gas chambers that they had there and also the staff they had to oversee such a brutal number of weeks. Because of this, Rudolf Hirsch, the former commandant of Auschwitz, was also brought back to oversee the mass gassings that would take place between the 8th of May and the 29th of July 1944. Hirsch was a man who turned Auschwitz from a small site to the largest concentration and death camp and he'd overseen the huge site's expansion on a huge scale. Hearst was known for bringing in the brutal and barbaric rules and laws of the camp, and he was seen by Heinrich Kimmler, the head of the SS, as a ruthless overseer, whose efficiency and skills could be used in a horrific and destructive manner. The action of slaughtering 434,000 people in Auschwitz in just over 50 days was codenamed Operation or Action Hearst, named after the Commandant. The first train left Budapest on the 29th of April 1944, and this carried 1,800 men and women aged between 16 and 50, who were said to have been fit to work. The next train left the next day carrying 2,000. When the transports got there, the selections took place, and those who were considered fit enough to work and carry out duties were admitted into the camp. This was roughly 616 women and 486 men, but 2,698 people in these first deportations were then gassed. But then the mass transports which were organised by the Reich Security Head Office would begin on the 14th of May 1944. Railroad stations each day were filled with deportees and freight trains containing around 4,000 people were being sent to Auschwitz three or four times a day. It was deportation on a huge scale and there were 109 trains that travelled to Auschwitz in 33 days. On some days there were six trains and the states of these were awful. They were incredibly overcrowded and cramped, and many died on their journey to Auschwitz. It was referred to in the camp's resistance as writing that, Auschwitz, Operation Hearst. Since the middle of May, numerous transports of Hungarian Jews. Every night, eight trains arrive, every day five. The train consists of 48 to 50 cars each, and in each car are 100 people. Settlers arrive with these transports. Each train of settlers also has two freight cars of lumbar, which the settlers unload on the death ramp, bringing to another site and stack in pale, bringing to another site and stack in piles that are intended for them. In order to simplify the work, the people arrive already separated, for example the children in separate cars. The closed trains wait for several hours on the special track to be unloaded. They stand in the nearby small forest. The camp's electric fence would be switched on 24-7 at this time to prevent escapes by Hungarian Jews, but hundreds of thousands of victims had reached the camps. Hearst would later admit at the end of the Second World War that Auschwitz could not cope with the number of people being sent there by Eichmann to their deaths, and he himself had to go to Budapest 
to arrange trains to come at more convenient times for Auschwitz. Because of this, thousands of people were not even executed in gas chambers. Some were shot in pits around Auschwitz. By the 9th of July 1944, 434,351 Jews in 147 trains had been deported and around 80% of these were gassed when they arrived or they were killed. The crematoria of Auschwitz could not cope with the dead, so pits were dug and bodies were burned in the open. As mentioned, 20% of deportees were selected to work in slave labour, or they were used in medical experiments. Many were also transferred to other concentration camps, as the gas chambers of Auschwitz could not handle the amount of inmates. Josef Mengele, the angel of death and evil doctor, would also select children on these transports to experiment upon. The Allies did know what was happening inside of the concentration camps, and they had learned that there were gas chambers inside of Auschwitz, which were killing hundreds each time. Rudolf Hess, at the end of the Second World War, would be brought to trial for his crimes inside of Auschwitz, as the Commandant, and also as someone who oversaw the operation. He would initially state that, I commanded Auschwitz until the 1st of December 1943, and estimate that at least 2.5 million victims were executed and exterminated there by gassing and burning, and at least another half a million succumbed to starvation and disease, making a total of about 3 million dead. This figure represents about 70-80% to of all persons sent to Auschwitz as prisoners, the remainder having been selected and used for slave labour in the concentration camp industries, including amongst the executed and burned were approximately 20,000 prisoners of war from Russia, who were delivered at Auschwitz in Wehrmacht transports operated by regular Wehrmacht officers and men. The remainder of those total number of victims included about 100,000 German Jews and a greater number of citizens, mostly Jewish from the Netherlands, France, Hungary, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Greece or other countries. We executed about 400,000 Hungarian Jews alone at Auschwitz in the summer of 1944. Hearst would later revise his death toll, but he would maintain that over 400,000 Hungarians had been slaughtered by his men inside of Auschwitz during Operation Hearst. At the time of the German invasion, Hungary had the largest population of Jews remaining in Europe, but following Hitler's order to occupy the land, Adolf Eichmann and Rudolf Hearst would cause chaos and would be responsible for the slaughter of around 400,000 people in just over 50 days. The mass deportations were horrific and the conditions aboard the trains were terrible, with many people succumbing to these before they even disembarked. But as soon as the people got off the trains, they would be herded into the gas chambers, where they would be driven in by SS guards, and it was horror and genocide on an industrial scale. At the end of the Second World War, Rudolf Hess, the man who the operation took its name from, and the man who oversaw the killing inside Auschwitz, would be executed for his crimes. He was taken back into Auschwitz, the camp he once was the commandant of, and he was hanged on a specially built gallows, as former prisoners of Auschwitz lobbied the authorities and courts to allow him to be executed in his former camp. He was a ruthless and barbaric man, who would during his time at Auschwitz live a double life. But Adolf Eichmann would be much more difficult for the authorities to pinpoint following World War II, but he would be located in Argentina by Mossad, who extracted him and then took him to Israel to stand trial for 15 criminal charges, including war crimes and crimes against humanity, and specifically crimes against the Jewish people. Eichmann would not deny his role in organising the Holocaust and the mass slaughter, but would say he was just following orders. He would then be found guilty, and then on the 1st of June 1962, he was executed by hanging. Both of these men were responsible for the horrific slaughter of Operation Hearse. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.